Hello. You can preach what I was going to preach. And that is prayer. Amen? Persistence and provision. You see, I had this all down. One night, probably about a week ago, in the middle of the night, I'm downstairs and I'm typing away, and this is what the Lord is talking to me about. This is what the Lord is telling me on Monday or, or this night, Thursday night, that uh, you're going to preach this. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, uh, and, and, you know, I'm just thinking, God, what is it that I need to say? What is it that I need to deliver? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because every, every area, amen, there is a need in every area. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so you are the people tonight. You are the one that has come to these grounds. Uh, how many know these are holy ground tonight? Amen. Uh, this is where the Lord's going to come. Uh, this is where the Lord's going to meet you. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. God's going to open. God's going to move. God's going to heal. Uh, God's going to bless. God's going to do uh, powerful things. Amen. Uh, praise God. Can you say amen? amen? Now I'm hearing something. Hallelujah. Praise God. So tomorrow night, listen, tomorrow night you don't want to miss it because first of all, we're going to take communion. We're going to take communion. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why this communion is very important to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Not a religious communion, not a doctrinal communion, but a communion that is from the kingdom of God. Hello, from the kingdom of God, amen, praise God. It's very important that you take this communion. And then we're going to make a declaration and we're going to decree, amen, hallelujah. And maybe you don't know what that is, but you're going to know what that is tomorrow. Amen, praise God, because God's getting ready to move in a, a powerful, powerful way, can you? Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. How, how many got your Bibles tonight? Amen. Where's Pam? Pam? How many got your Bibles tonight? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like I said the other night, I was typing away. And I, I have to put it on this form and blow it up a little bit. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many know tonight that prayer is important? Prayer is powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can't say amen, just wave at me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But God gave you a voice. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, I was involved in the Catholicism. I was a Catholic for many, many years. Amen. And the Catholic Church were quiet. Amen. Hallelujah. But when I got saved, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. Because we're children of God. Amen. We begin to have a, a, a voice. Amen. We can begin to say, praise God. We begin to say, hallelujah. We begin to raise our hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many can do that tonight? Amen. Can we say amen tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. I can have some water this evening. The Bible says, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get out of the country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make you a great nation. Amen. Hallelujah. And your name will be great and you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. In verse number three, you will be blessed. Those who bless you. Amen. And I will curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Get it all together. Amen. Praise God. The number one most important thing tonight, amen, is prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer is something that God had given you and I tonight. A tool tonight. Amen. A tool that we can use against the powers of the enemy that comes. Powers of the enemy comes like a flood tonight. Amen. The Bible says get out of the country. A calling from God. God the Father. Abraham heard from the Father. Why? How did he hear from God? Because he was a prayerful man. Amen. He was hearing from God. There was a connection to the Father tonight. Amen. Now you got to understand Abraham was not even, not even a, a children of God. He was from another nation. He was from another country. Amen. Hallelujah. He was outside. And God came, hallelujah, God moved upon Abraham. God began to move upon this man as he began to pray. Now here was a man that was outside from the children of God, outside from the nation of God's people. God called on Abraham. God came down on Abraham. Because Abraham was a prayerful man. Hallelujah. He knew that there was a God. He knew that God, the Father, was a, 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 He was of a Father. He was who He is. Amen. And God moved on Abraham. God opened some things in Abraham's life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And I want you to know tonight, God, God began to open his mind, his heart, uh, and his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And God began to call upon Abraham. Amen. Praise God, because there is a call when you're a prayerful person. Amen. When you're a prayerful man. Hallelujah. God hears you, your prayer tonight. Amen. Praise God. God hears uh, your cry unto the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you are or, or what condition uh, you may be in tonight. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. I, you know, when I was, uh, when I was, uh, when, when Tyler was telling you uh, about, uh, you know, her just talking to me, uh, and every time she spoke to me, she nudged at me. She, 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 she nudged my heart, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, who are you? Uh, as a, you know, you're, you're I'm supposed to be telling taking you out. We're supposed to be doing something else. And you're preaching to me about God. Hallelujah. And I'm hearing this word. I'm hearing the word of God. And every time we went out, it was like she poked at me and she nudged at me. And I sometimes go home and I'm upset because she's talking about salvation. I didn't really know salvation. But I'm telling you, every time that word came, it came in peace pierced my heart. It came and pierced my soul. It came and pierced my mind. It came and pierced my spirit because this is the Word of God. The Word of God is active. The Word of God is sharp. The Word of God moves in a powerful way in the spiritual realm. Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. I don't know how you got saved. I don't know where you were. I don't know what condition you were in, but somebody was praying Somebody was giving God uh, all the information uh, about you tonight. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. You see, tonight, praying for someone, <laughs> you're digging into the spirit. 
You're digging into the in, in, in a spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. And like, like Abraham did. He got up every morning. He got up every morning and began to praise God. I don't know about you. Sometimes, and most times, I get up at 3.30. And lots of times, I get up at 3.33 in the morning. And I wake up. And the first thing I say, Lord, I praise your wonderful name. Lord, I thank you because this is the time, the hour you want me to get a hold of you. Amen. This is the time and hour that you want me to, to commune with you tonight. Amen. I, you know, when it begins, I, I, I just kind of get up and roll over. Amen. Roll over. <laughs> and then it happens again. And then again, you know, when God nudges you when it's 3.33 a.m. in the morning a few times, a few times, wouldn't you think what is happening? <laughs> I'm getting up at 3. I used to tell Tyler, I got up at 3.33 a.m. again. What does that mean? What does that mean? And then I thought, you know, if God wakes me up tomorrow, Morning at 3.33 a.m., I'm just going to get up and pray. Right? Is that what you're going to do? Now, would you not do that? Amen? And then the next night, I get up at 3.33 a.m. And I got up, and I began to think, well, Lord, Okay, Lord, I know this is you. Now what? Now what? And the Lord slowly began to speak to me and says, just give me praise. Just give me all your praise. <laughs> and so everybody's asleep. Now begin to give up. Our Lord, our God, the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this time, Lord, that you've given me, Father God. Lord, that I would wake up, Lord, that I, you woke me up at this moment, this time. I pray for my kids and name them all the way down the line. I pray for my grandkids, name them all the way down the line and begin to pray for our church and our pastor and I begin to pray for all and pretty soon, hallelujah, one hour goes by and that doesn't even seem like an hour went by, amen, hallelujah. And then every day and every day it happens again. It happens again. And pretty soon it becomes uh, not, uh, uh, it just becomes a habit. Amen. Hallelujah. And then through that you begin to see the move and the hand of God. God doing something that very impossible happening. Hallelujah. It's like a mountain before you. And all of a sudden that mountain begins to move. Amen. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, God begins to answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I know some of you in this place, uh, underneath this tent, uh, has experienced that same thing. Amen. You know what I'm talking about tonight. Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. Maybe this hasn't happened to you, but I'm telling you tonight, God's getting ready to do something powerful in your life. Can you say amen? Amen, amen says, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's what amen means. How many would agree with me? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, God wants to wake you up. God wants to wake you up in the spirit. Amen. This is not a religion. This is not a religious meeting. I threw religion out the window many years ago. <gasps> I threw it out the window. And I 
and said, God, I want you to move in my life. I want you to speak to me. Hallelujah. I want you to move by your spirit. Wake me up again. Wake me up again. Hallelujah. Let me see the move of God. Let me see you move in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not a religion. This is not a religion. I'm not a religious man. <gasps> but I love God. I love Jesus with all my heart. I see the kingdom of God moving. I don't see church of God, assemblies of God, I don't see Baptists. I don't see Nazarene. These are all man-made religion. But when the kingdom of God comes, then something very, very powerful begins to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is what Tyler was talking about. Amen. We've been all over the country crisscross. I have not unpacked totally for the past 12 years. Amen. Hallelujah. My bag is always packed up. Every once in a while, I'll take every, all, of my, all of my clothes out and I will wash them. Amen. I will wash them and then repack it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've crisscross America. We've crisscross United States of America. Amen. Hallelujah. And we've come into Canada and in Winnipeg and Garden Hill and all that area. Hallelujah. We went to Iraq. Amen. Praise God. We stood in northern Iraq. We stood in the mountains of Nahum's Mountain. Amen. We prayed from there. Hallelujah. We stood in Israel. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we prayed from the highest mountain. The eight months later, we were there again with our president, Jonathan Nez. We came back and we went and, and we did all that work. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we crisscrossed many different nations. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are praying. We believe in God. God opens those doors because we pray. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. How many believe in your prayer tonight? Come on, say amen tonight. Amen. How many believe in what you pray for tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I've seen cancer fall from people. Amen. Hallelujah. We've seen a leg grow eight inches. Eight inches. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Brought the man out in front of 300 people. And our pastor brought a man up. He had a platform shoe. And he took off his shoe three inches short in one leg. Because of an accident, they fused his bones together and they gave him a platform shoe. When we pray, that leg began to grow. One inch, two inches. And it was wow. Have you ever seen a leg grow two inches? And all of a sudden, three inches. Man, something began to happen when it was three inches coming out. We know that it wasn't man. We know that it wasn't pulling the leg out. When it became four inches, my God, the power of God came in that tent. All the kids that were playing volleyball outside, they came in. Amen. Hallelujah. And that leg began to grow. My God. Hallelujah. When it came to four or five inches, there was a fright. There was a fright from the, the, from, the, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet because that leg was growing. And that man, he would, he would, 
He said, man, my leg is tickling. But something's happening. And that leg was crumbling. A full eight inches. <coughs> that man took off his platform shoe and walked down that steps. A normal man. Now you ought to be shouting, amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you something of truth tonight. I'm not just making this up tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. Whether you believe in prayer or you don't believe in prayer. But you're sitting right here tonight, amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord would have me to pray. And the Lord would have me to preach uh, this very message uh, to you tonight. Amen. And I've heard, heard the, the testimonies. Hallelujah. How many know tonight your prayer is important to God tonight? Amen. I said your prayer is important to God tonight. Because God made you. God made you tonight. How many know tonight that, that the Lord wants to stir some things in your life tonight? Amen. Move in the spiritual realm. Move tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the only way to do it, the only way to do it is by you praying and believing God. Otherwise, you, you just sit there and twiddle your thumb. Hello. 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 Amen. You just sit there and you hear messages after messages and probably some of you sleep in the church. Hello. Come on. It's okay to say amen. Come on. It's okay to say amen. Hallelujah. The only time you get rest is in the church. And you're not off. Amen. <laughs> you see, tonight uh, there has got to be a stirring. God wants to stir you up. Can you say amen tonight? And so this was happening with Abraham. God was stirring him up because God was getting ready to move in his life. God was getting ready to stir some impossibilities in his life tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. He was getting ready to move Abraham out of his family, his father's house, and move from here. Hello. God was getting ready to do that. And so, God came down and began to tell Abraham, I will show you a country but I got you, I need you to get up, get all of your belongings, your possession, pack them all up, and go. Now, let it happen, it's okay. Oh, Sarai, now, that was going to be a problem because you know how you women are, right? <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? Where are we going? You know, that's probably you didn't hear from God. That's probably something else. How are you going to get there? And where are we going to go? Where are we going to live? What are you talking about? I can hear you. Amen. But nevertheless, Nevertheless, they were up and they still didn't know where they were going the moment they were leaving. Which way, Lord? Which way? 
You see, the Lord will not give you a direction until you move. Hello? Otherwise, you just sit there like that. <laughs> Amen? You sit there like that. With your arms like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holding on to your ribs. Amen. Until you move. That's when God says, okay, now, now, now we're moving. Now we're going to do something. Okay, now. The move of the moment you move. And the Lord says, 50 steps from here, you will turn away. And you will go in that direction for two days. Now he was hearing from God. Now direction was coming. And then Abraham said, we're going to go this way. And we're going to go in that direction. We were there. We were there. You have a beautiful country here. Everything. I don't know why this grass is on grass. <laughs> Everything is grass here. We drove for miles and miles and miles. And beautiful yellow fields and green and trees become the Navajo Nation it's not even like that we have a different kind of beauty in its rocks I mean I'm telling you rocks that will go 300 feet up in the air beautiful sand dunes and beautiful lizards <laughs> I don't know what you have out here, but everything is beautiful. The Canyon de Shades, you got you got monument valleys, you got you got Grand Canyon, you got all of these beauty, the Sedonas and, and all of this stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. But out here, the green grass, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so when when he left. God showed him the beautiful landscape, the beautiful nice places where they could live. Now you could go out here and live anywhere. Everything's so green, nice. Amen. But they had to go accordingly. To what God was saying. And we need to hear from God. Just like that. Amen. Not what you think. Not what man thinks. But what God says. What God says. That's where we need to be tonight. Amen. Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's got to be a stirring tonight. Say, I'm stirred up tonight. Come on, say, I'm stirred up tonight. Come on, say, I am stirred up tonight. Amen. You see, the problem is we don't talk. Amen. We talk like... What? What? What did you say? Huh? And Navajos, huh? I don't know about you, Crees. Same thing, huh? Hey, Amen. We need to hear from God. Hey, Amen. And so God took Abraham out and began to show him a new country. A new land. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Let me just take this with me. How about that? Amen. 
And I'm not even on the yellow part yet. Abraham moved when the Lord told him to move, knowing that the Father was dealing with his life, his family, his possession, because the Lord had given him all that he had. We need people who need to hear from the Lord because the Father who is speaking to you, His voice is calling you. There is instruction for your life tonight. Can you say amen? Now I'm writing this a couple couple nights ago. I'm writing this. I'm, I, 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 I'm going to be preaching to a group of people. To this is my sermon to you tonight. Hello. My sermon to you tonight. There is a blessing for your life, healing for your body. We are his children, his kids, his kids will listen to his father. Amen? Hallelujah. How many know you are, you are kids in the eyes of the Lord tonight? You are his kids tonight. Amen? And those of us that have kids, those of us that have children, amen. I've got five kids. I've got nine grandkids. I've got my three-year-old coming every morning, Monday to Saturday. He just lives four down, four houses down. And he comes running over. And I'm teaching him. He's three years old. He's picking up anything and everything. I'm teaching him. And then at the same time, I'm teaching him Navajo. Hello. Navajo. Navajo. Hallelujah. Navajo. Dine. Bizarre. Pachiyashke. I'm speaking Navajo to him. I say, I can't have. He goes, I can't. No, I can't have. Takes two or three times, then he say, I can't have. I say, yeah. That means thank you. I can't have. Yat a. Yat a. That means, that means hello. Yat a. Hi. Did you say hi, hon? <laughs> hi. Yat eh. Amen. Hallelujah. Teaching. Teaching because that's what a father does tonight. Amen. The father comes and begins to look you right in the eye. Right in the eye and say, I yours to come. I you say you should come. Oh, you should come. Me, that is delicious. I'm telling you, after me, I say I you should say emphasis. I you should come. If you just say I you should come, that that has me. That's like. <laughs> but when you say I you should come, that means man, that was so good. Hallelujah. Do you have that in Greek? Hey Amen. How do you say that was delicious? We can sing. We can sing. I was telling Pastor Mavis, if I spent a month here, I would be speaking your language. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Abraham was a father. Because he was now in the will of God. He was now hearing from God. How many want to hear from God tonight? Amen. I mean clearly hear from God. God does speak. I do hear from God. Amen. Hallelujah. I do hear what he's saying to me. Amen. Just like the night I was writing this thing. He said, you're going to be preaching this. You're going to encourage them. Amen. 
You're going to stir some things in their lives. Amen. You're going to tell them, I love them. You're going to tell them, I am the Father. Hello. Come on. Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. He is your Father tonight. Amen. Sometimes there's so much distraction that sets before us. Amen? Oh, I'm telling you, we had a hard time getting here from the very beginning. We were supposed to fly out on July 4th, but we were stuck in Albuquerque, New Mexico on July 4th. And everywhere, every, all these fireworks were going off. Ty and I, we were in our room on top of the hill. We just opened the window. And we saw fireworks from one end of town to the other end of town. And every firework in between. I have never, ever seen Fireworks like that in my life. That was a wow! Wow! And the Lord wanted me to see that. Hello? <laughs> but most of all, listen, the real reason why our plane was delayed was because there was a lady that called us. I forget her name, but she was from the tribe, the Sioux tribe. Seven bands of Sioux. She was Dakota. There's Lakota, Lakota, and all these seven bands. But she was coming from the tribe, and she began to tell us as we were eating dinner. She said, 38 of the men were arrested. And I know I'm cutting this real, chopping up this real bad. But 38 of the men were, 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 were arrested. All because they were starving. The United States government starved them out. And they went to a place they wanted to train. But the person, the people there turned and said, they were stealing from us. It was never even so. And so they took these 38 men and jailed them. And while they were in jail, the missionaries came. And these 38 men got saved. 38 Sioux. Back in the early 1900s, 38 of them. And they began to learn about God. They began to learn about who God is. At some point in time, Abraham Lincoln ordered these Sioux, 38 Sioux men, to be hung to the gallows. So as they were going to be hung, they learned the song. And they were singing the song about Jesus and the goodness of Jesus. As they marched, they got hung. And she's also coming from a place where the boarding school children that band, that tribe, suffered. The United States government doing what they did to the boarding school kids and the Catholic Church. What happened? Kind of like what happened here. We were just down the road where all of this took place. History some things that were done, some things that 
are in the ground. Amen. Maybe some of your families, maybe they were the lineage that this happened to. How do you forgive? How do you say, I forgive you? Probably one of the hardest things to ever do. But down the road we prayed this afternoon. I prayed. And then she was telling us about it. And we prayed and we got some things in motion. We talked to her and prayed with her. This is what God wanted. This is what God wanted. He wanted us to go into South Dakota. And now we have that open to South Dakota. You see, because we hear from the Father tonight. We hear from God what needs to be done. I met my cousin while we were in the airport and she does these beautiful, beautiful jewelry and I saw, all of a sudden I saw her bling. I had my head down and, and she was walking by and I, I saw her bling and I thought, I, I know that ring. I looked up and here was my cousin taking a trip, a vacation to Florida. And I dropped, grabbed her arm and I said, and I said, Chagudinia. And she looked at me, looked at me and she goes, ah! And in the Navajo I said, where are you going? And she was in total surprise. Amen. Hallelujah. God puts people in front of you. And as we were talking, I was telling her, well, they, they canceled our flights and da 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 da. And she's looking at me. She goes, I can't believe you are so calm about this. She goes, if it was me, I would go. You know how you are. <laughs> Amen. And she's looking at me and she said, I can't believe you are so calm. And she knows I'm a preacher. I said, yeah. I said, everything works out. You know, and you know I'm, I'm not worried about anything. You know, everything will work out. And she said, man, I wish I had that. And I said, you can have it. Hallelujah. Putting that little word, because she's not saved. Amen. Putting that little word, that little reaction. Amen. It's going to be sticking in her mind. How many know that tonight? Amen. The little word you say, the little word that you put in, the little reaction that you put in into other people's lives, they will remember. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're the one that goes, la, 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 they will remember. Amen? Oh, that lady, she just, she is just, she just sparks like nobody's business. That's what they will remember. Amen? But if you have the calmness, and the, you know, you're all cool, and you're, you know, everything's good, and they're going to freak out and say, man, how calm can you be? Amen. Because they will remember. Hallelujah. That's just free. That's who that is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so it's Psalm 34 and 11. The Bible says, Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you. Fear the Lord. Fear means respect. Fear means to honor. Fear means to love. Amen. The Lord your God. Hallelujah. How many know God will teach us? Amen. What time is it? <laughs> 10 to 10 and still lit up. Last night we came and man, we were so tired. In the meantime, we just zonked out at probably 5 o'clock and the sun was noon. 
Yeah, well, we're coming from its noon time, five o'clock, and we got up like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and it was like that. And Titus says, Oh, look outside. I looked outside, and it's like, Oh, it's seven o'clock, because seven o'clock back at home, it's like that. And it's like, she goes, look at the time. And it was almost 11. I looked outside and looked at the test. No way. What? And we waited 30 more minutes. Barely was getting dark. And at midnight, it finally got dark. I said, man, this is weird. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's why we're going to go a little longer. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen, man, I'm still on prayer too. We still got persistence. We still got provision. Hallelujah. And we got to do communion tomorrow. We got to do decrees. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, there's so much to unload tonight. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah, into your life, amen. I want you alive, hallelujah. I want you lit up, amen. Praise God, because God wants to light you up, amen, hallelujah. He wants you to become a wonder to the people, amen, hallelujah. Just like my cousin Tanya, hallelujah. She came and said, Ron, you are so calm. I like the way she said that. How calm can you be? Man, I thought to myself, thank you, Lord, because that wasn't Ron Harvey many, many years ago. Amen. When Titus talking to you about how I was, I was the Hulk. I turned green. I developed muscles like this. Nobody talked to me like that. Who do you think you are? Type of thing. Amen. But when I was calm, that's something else, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. And the Lord will teach you how to fear, how to respect, how to love, how to honor. Amen, praise God. Can you say amen tonight? I just do a few more. You have to, you have to have a need to pray, amen. Prayer in your life. In order to hear from God, the Father, to hear his voice, just like Abraham did, he had to know who God was, amen. Praise God. You have to know who God is tonight, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. That means you're gonna have to get involved. That means you're gonna have to start praying. That means you're gonna have to start believing in God tonight. That means you're gonna have to believe in the word of God tonight, amen. Praise God. Every time you open the word, every time you read his word, how many know God will begin to speak to you? Hello? Amen. God will begin to speak to you. Amen. Not just a, another book. Oh, I read chapter, three chapters today. Oh, I did my deed. Mm. No, you didn't, you didn't do nothing. You didn't accomplish anything. Amen. Oh, when that word begins to speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes. In Isaiah 60, when you read, it says, Ndita! That's what it says. Ndita! Ndita! Hey, hallelujah, Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, blessings of God be upon you, son. Amen, hallelujah. It means arise, arise. He says, shine, because gross darkness has covered the land. Can you not see? Can you not see how wicked this land has become? Can you not see how many 
Young kids are dying because of meth, because of these dangerous drugs, fentanyl. Can you not see the wickedness of alcohol? Can you not see all of these things? He says, shine, shine. How are you gonna shine? People are looking at you. People are watching you. People know who you are, where you go to church, where you live. Amen? That's why we need God. That's why we need His Word. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. That's why we need to know God, to honor, respect, and to love, because the Lord will teach you. Amen. The next time you get mad, the next time you want to have a foul mouth, the Holy Ghost is going to say, no. Don't even, don't even say that. Don't even think that. <clears throat> I am. I know because that happens to me. Hello. Hello. If it happens to me, it happens to you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's up to you to shut up or bless it. Hello. Come on. Hello. <clears throat> Amen. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The Lord wants to teach you to know. All of these things, oh man, I don't even have enough time to finish everything that I want to preach. Amen, hallelujah. But I'm telling you tonight, praise God. In Psalms 42, 7, deep calleth unto the deep, amen. Praise God, at the noise of like waterfalls, amen. Praise God, the deep, uh, hallelujah, the deep things of God calls the deep things of who you are tonight, amen. Praise God. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you out to change you. He'll bring you out to, 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 to send you. Amen. Praise God. Send you where? Grocery store. <laughs> Gas station. You're going to meet someone. You're, God, God, God has someone that's right in line. Maybe that's someone that you got all oh, so mad maybe four or five years ago and then you, you, and all of a sudden you turn the corner and she's standing there looking at you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> looking at you. What you gonna do? Amen? Turn the other way. I had that happen to me. Amen. I had that happen to me. The Lord said, oh, I love all of you. And I'm sitting right there. Really? And she dashes out. She's a preacher. And then we go to Walmart. You know how Walmart, they stack all the stuff and, you know, and there's only one way because they're restacking some things and, the, and, and she, I mean, it's gotta be God. I turn in one direction and lo and behold, she's coming with her cart and she sees me. I thought, oh my gosh, okay. She says, I love you all, amen. And she's a preacher. But in the moment she sees me, man, she's like, and there's nowhere to turn. There's nowhere to turn except for one aisle down the dog food area. Man, I tell you, I'm coming. I'm, I'm just coming. See what she's going to do. And she turned in the dog food area, just not look back. And I said, wow. Well, 
You see, the opportunity will come. Amen. The opportunity, and I'm going to quit here because your, your eyes are starting to go like this, and I don't know why, because there's still a lot of light out there. <laughs> The opportunity is going to come that God wants to deal with all those issues that you have in you tonight. Amen. God wants to clear it all up. God wants to save you. God wants to stir in your life because he's getting ready to give you a provision and God's not going to give you provision until you are cleaned up. Amen? Now I'm preaching to you tonight. Say, he's preaching to me. Come on, say, he's preaching to me. Oh, that makes me feel good. If you didn't say it, I'm preaching to you more. Amen? Because Every single one of us tonight, there is a human, because you're a human being, there's an all-out war and an all-out attack against you, amen, to bring you down, to put a stop, so you will not be blessed, so that you will stay in that position. For a long time or even die like that but if we obey God and we allow God to change us then God getting ready for provision I haven't even gotten to persistence or provision but I think you know what I'm talking about tonight amen amen hallelujah so let's bow our heads here. Let's bow our heads here. Say, Father, tonight, I'm asking that you come into my life, come into my heart. I will make you my Lord, my Savior. Lord, I rededicate my life let your word come. Let it change me. Lord, right now, I'm praying for the many needs. Lord, that you will touch, that you will move upon my prayer line. But nothing will happen if I don't change first. Father, tonight, I'm asking, cleanse my heart, cleanse my spirit, cleanse my mind. I forgive all those that have wronged me. I give it to you. And Lord, I pray 